Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up e-commerce tracking in GA4 or Google Analytics 4 properties. The way you configure e-commerce tracking will depend on how Google Analytics is implemented on your website. For example, if you're using Google Tag Manager, then you can use a GA4 event tag to capture details from the data layer. Or if you're using gtag.js, then you'll need to modify the tracking code. Let's jump in and look at these options. Before we get started, I want to mention e-commerce tracking for hosted platforms and plugins. If you're using a hosted e-commerce platform like Shopify, or you're using a WordPress plugin for Google Analytics, you might have to wait until they support e-commerce tracking for GA4 properties. For example, the built-in Google Analytics integration available in Shopify doesn't currently support GA4 properties. In some cases, you might be able to connect your existing standard Universal Analytics property to your GA4 property to report on transactions. If your platform or plugin adds the gtag.js version of the tracking code to your website, then you can connect the two properties so that data automatically flows into your GA4 reports. Okay, we're going to start by looking at a custom implementation. So let's head to my demo site. My demo website uses Google Tag Manager to track transactions, page views, and other actions. So let's start by purchasing a product on my demo site. I'm going to select a product, add it to my shopping cart, and make a purchase. We're now on the confirmation page, so let's view the source code. We can see the custom data layer that includes the details for our transaction. This is using the e-commerce schema for Universal Analytics properties which is also compatible with GA4. The schema for GA4 properties is slightly different. Since the current recommendation is still to run a GA4 property in parallel to a Universal Analytics property, I recommend using the same schema that we can see here. So the e-commerce schema for Universal Analytics. We can then configure Google Tag Manager to send the details for each transaction to our Universal Analytics property and our GA4 property. If you're only using a GA4 property, then you can continue to follow these steps, or you can implement a custom data layer that uses the e-commerce schema for GA4. Just remember that the GA4 schema isn't compatible with Universal Analytics. Okay, now let's head to Google Tag Manager. We can see there is already a standard Universal Analytics tag. So let's start by having a quick look at this tag. Let's select the tag. And the tag configuration. And let's select the information icon next to the Google Analytics settings variable. This shows us that all of the e-commerce transaction details are being automatically found in the data layer and sent to Universal Analytics. So it's really easy to send transactions to Universal Analytics. Okay, let's close the variable and the tag. We can also see there is a GA4 configuration tag. This tag will automatically send page views to our GA4 property, but to send e-commerce transactions, requires custom configuration. To send e-commerce transactions, we'll need to add a new tag. So let's create a new tag. Let's name the tag GA4 e-commerce transaction. And let's select GA4 event as the tag type. Now we can select our existing GA4 tag as the configuration tag and we're going to enter purchase as the event name. Now we need to select event parameters, and we're going to enter items. This is the predefined parameter name used to report on the products people purchase in GA4. Now we need to create a new variable. Let's name the variable ecommerce products. And let's select 
data layer variable as the type. For the data layer variable name, we need to enter ecommerce.purchase.products. And then we can save the variable. Now we can repeat these steps to add the other information for our transactions. We can add the transaction ID. And we're going to enter ecommerce.purchase.actionField.id for the variable. Affiliation. And we're going to enter ecommerce.purchase.actionField.affiliation for the variable. Revenue. And we're going to enter ecommerce.purchase.actionField.revenue for the variable. Tax. And we're going to enter ecommerce.purchase.actionField.tax for the variable. and shipping. And we're going to enter ecommerce.purchase.actionField.shipping for the variable. Now we need to create a trigger so that the tag only fires when a purchase occurs on our website. So let's create a new trigger. Let's name the trigger e-commerce purchase. And let's select custom event as the trigger type. Now let's enter purchase as the event name. This will mean our trigger only fires when a purchase occurs. Now let's save the trigger. And let's preview our changes. We can now complete another transaction. And we can check to see that the tag has fired in Tag Assistant. We can select the purchase event and select the tag. We can then choose values to check that the values have been sent to Google Analytics. And we can also head to Google Analytics and open the debug view. This lets us check that the details are being correctly passed to Google Analytics. So that's how we can use our existing data layer to capture e-commerce details for our GA4 property. Okay, but what if we're not using Google Tag Manager and we're using the gtag.js tracking code instead? Well, in this case we need to modify the tracking code when a transaction takes place. Let's head to the back end of my course platform to see how this works. Now we could of course use Google Tag Manager and a custom data layer as we've already covered, but I also want to show you how to modify the gtag.js tracking code to track transactions. So here we can add the code to the page people see after they've made a purchase. 
I've already added the standard gtag.js tracking code. Now we can head to Google Developers and grab the example e-commerce tracking code. Now I can adjust the code. and enter the liquid markup variables that will populate the transaction details into our code. The way you do this will depend on the platform you're using, so I recommend checking out the documentation for your platform and even contacting support for your platform to get help setting up the tracking code correctly. I also want to highlight that if you're using a plugin like Monster Insights for WordPress, then you'll need to continue using Universal Analytics, since it's not yet compatible with GA4. If the plugin you are using adds the gtag.js tracking code, then you do have the option of using your existing Universal Analytics property to send data to GA4. I've covered this briefly in another one of my GA4 videos, and I've included a link to it in the description below. So that's how you can track e-commerce transactions into GA4 properties. Remember the method you use to track transactions will depend on how Google Analytics is implemented on your website. If you're using Google Tag Manager, then you'll also need to implement a data layer to make transaction details available to your tags. And if you're tracking transactions into a standard Universal Analytics property, then you can adjust your implementation to also send the details to your GA4 property. Are you tracking transactions into GA4? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.